tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. They knew that a lot of the a lot of the Filipinos, half of us that went to London came from repertory Philippines. Okay. So, that's so you know, uh, he he had the soft spot for us. Teaching, training young people, and uh, passing on your experience and your learning to to the kids has been an has been an advocacy uh, of yours for many years yes. now, right? Yeah, yeah. I haven't stopped teaching. The only time I'd stopped teaching was the years when I was in London. Uh, wow. And then maybe uh, and then maybe a little bit after I arrived because. Uh, you know, I was like doing the rounds of the events and the uh, concerts and lounge shows and and all of those things straight off of of um, my arrival in London. So, uh, from London, so I was very very busy. But I soon got back into to teaching. Not too long after that. Recently, um, I think the groundbreaking work that you and Men should did your collaboration with Eraser Heads and Ellie Buendia has created the phenomenon that is Ang Huling El Bimbo. That's right. And uh, yes. it's just, um, I saw one of the shows during the last run, and uh, I was with a bunch of people who were all coming from overseas, and it was, for them, it was their first time to see a local production. Right. I tell you, the last half hour of the show, there was not a dry eye in our row, it's a good thing I brought a pack of tissues because yeah it was such it was so riveting that last scene was so riveting and I it was so memorable right. for me and for the rest of us and uh, it was just to me it was a tremendous surprise that the songs of eraser heads could be put together and strung yeah. into this riveting story this such a memorable piece i mean and you're you were one of the guys who really fought for that project i remember what's wonderful about all those people is they are so collaborative yes you know they're so willing to work together for the ultimate good of the show and and nobody has such an ego that they say hey you know what maybe we can do that better and then they'll say you know what yeah let's try it it's not like you know, nobody gets offended at a suggestion of trying something different or, you know, yes. uh, it was wonderful working with them. And, you know, we had to go back over the story, fine tooth comb, everything, you know. Um, and of course, we, we had a dramaturg um, come in, Floyd, Floyd Quintus came in also to, right. to help us fine tune. Um, you know, and it's, it's an original piece like that um you know there's never really an end point to it it's always evolving always uh perfecting itself and getting better and better and better and and um i, I think this is um uh, i think you would you could consider this uh production a modern classic because it 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 sort of transcends the time and the place yes. of its narrative you know of its narrative and it's still, because the play and, and, itself is set in the the martial law years, right? Yes, just after. You're in a position right now of um, influencing a new kind of audience, building a new kind of theater audience that are you know not just the millennials but even the younger generations that will eventually uh, be your theater audience with your productions in resorts world yeah. a dream role that you still have to play uh that i still have to play you know what i don't have a dream role that i want to play um th that's so strange but a lot of people ask me that but i don't have one i you know i there's uh oh maybe 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 the male version of on a clear day of course it had to be a barbara streisand role <laughs> there is a male version 
Um, yeah. But, maybe, but I'm too old for that, right? Yeah. I think people to um, uh, appreciate new material uh, is 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 quite a challenge because uh, there are established uh, hits from uh, big theater productions abroad that are now touring here in the Philippines. Right. Uh, we've the likes of Phantom of the Opera and Cats and um, Wicked. King, uh, all being uh, played and all that. So what is the effect of these foreign productions and competing with your venue and your production company vis-a-vis -vis rep? What, what do you think is going on? How does uh, it affect You know, uh, well, it, it affects us in several ways. Um, the good side of it is that the people don't have to fly out to watch the yes. shows. They can see them, right? Um, there, the the negative side of that is that sometimes the little, the smaller companies, the you know, there's a limited pool of um, corporate support or sponsorship that is available to theater, and always the thinking is still, oh, they're foreign, they must be good. So again, yes. they suck up, they suck up a lot of the sponsorships leaving hardly any for the local theater companies yeah, sad. so uh that's one of the things that we still need to compete uh with them for but um i think you know uh the the audiences local audiences are are, are wisening up and they realize yeah. that you know the local talents are are just as good uh, and they they're now patronize uh, you know giving their, their patronage now uh, to the local theater yeah. uh, community so that's that's a good thing but what's available right now on the internet a lot of theater companies are uh, providing their uh, their productions for viewing for free take advantage of that watch it all enjoy it while it's available and then when on the other side, uh, we will all see you on the other side of this pandemic and we're looking forward to um, a revitalized audience a revitalized theater industry um, raring to go and give you shows and more great performances so we'll just bide our time and then we'll all be back sooner than you think stay tuned for the next episode only here on v81 radio manila